We're in the seventh month of the COVID pandemic and uh, the world is locked down. We've all been isolated and uh, worried and fearful and wondering what comes next. And everybody's desperate to get out and desperate to be in nature. It's quite extraordinary how uh, you can find this beautiful little bit of landscape in the middle of the city. It's, it's extraordinary. And the amazing sound of the stream in the middle of the city. It's just so joyful. Let's see. No. Perfect. Perfect. So this is going to stay. It's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to hold on to this painting because it's framed. And this is going to get uh, rolled up after we varnish it. I want my landscape paintings to not have a horizon line. That's the most important thing for me. It's the most obvious way of moving away from a predictability in landscape. How to make a landscape with no horizon line. And the way I have done that is by looking down and being looking, the point of view is from above, looking down into the forest, into the forest stream, into the woodland stream. And I think that what happens is without the horizon line, there becomes a kind of, uh, the figure, you, one can enter the painting. The viewer can become part of the painting rather than looking at the landscape as a distance, you're, you're immersed. And I didn't realize at the time that that's what I was doing, but that certainly seems to be the constant in this last, you know, these last years of painting. I don't, I, I think of them all as the forest floor. Mm. And, uh, so, and the scroll comes from Chinese painting. The scroll comes from uh, uh, David Hockney did this wonderful film called Going Down the Grand Canal with the Emperor of China. And he unrolls a Chinese scroll painting and he talks about the multiplicity of points of view within the painting, which is something that is in fact very Cubist, because central to Cubism is a multiplicity of vantage points. And so with the scroll paintings, it's a way of being able to see many different things without having a one point perspective. So that seemed very uh, endearing to me. That seemed like kind of an exciting idea that I wanted to try. And I think it's more uh, obvious in the big black and white uh, pieces than in the colored paintings. Mm -hmm. So we're unrolling this for shipping. And um, 
And this is the way we store them. And it's nice for me to see this painting. It's not on here. We've lost the painting that we're looking for. <laughs> but <laughs> so much for our good planning, <laughs> Sarah. Oh. Wrong roll. OK, but I, anyway, I'm happy to see this because this is going to be the companion piece for this painting. So it makes me see how much darker this painting has got to get, yeah. right? So far, it's my darkest dark there. And this is wet. I can't go over that again. This is wet. I can't go over that again. I have to wait till all that dries. But all this on the bottom now, I can get darker. Kind of nuts, isn't it? That these paintings look like they're, they're done with these huge gestures and these huge movements. And really, they're not at all. They're done with tiny, small little brushes. You go, it kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Kind of go, go crazy. Trying to figure out where you are. And I don't want a brush stroke. <laughs> I don't want any br gesture of the brush stroke here at all. So it has to get blotted down and then gone back over. So there's no brush stroke. Then that has to dry and then I do another layer and another layer and another layer. Being in the landscape, being in the country where one is kind of protected for those hours of reverie and being lost among dappled light, falling leaves and the beauty of it, the beauty of the sound of the wind and the water, the preciousness of it and the fleetingness of it. And there are so many millions of people who have the same sense of urgency and loss and need to make focus on these issues of climate change. I hope to do that in my work. I hope to bring attention to the preciousness of it and how fortunate we are to have it around us. What the Chinese call the life force, the water, the stream, the history of the stream and Chinese painting. The difference between the stream as as life force and the volume and the weight of European painting. I think about that all the time. The balance of one to the other. Uh, these hand clip brushes have a very symphonic Uh, symphonic possibilities. They're very notational. 
because of the different thicknesses and thinnesses that can go down right away. They're so, it's so pleasurable to use them. Like thousands of little footsteps on the paper. That's it.